What's up, beautiful world? Welcome to another episode of the Black Sheep Perspective. Today I got some awesome guests that I literally just met maybe an hour ago. You know, we were brushing up, talking about everything, and uh, I had so many questions. Um, I didn't get their last names, but we'll get that clearly in a little bit uh, towards the end of the podcast. But I have Steve and Jake with me who just happened to break the world record. Definitely United States, definitely Florida. But we are now figuring out that they broke the world record on the biggest Burmese python yep. ever caught. That is correct. Alive, right? It has to be alive, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. We didn't find him dead. He was... But that's the record. The record has to... They have to be alive at the time or not? I don't think so. I mean... That's, that's the little detail we might not know. I guess huh? as far as they know, uh, when we measured this thing, um, it was the biggest ever on record that they'd ever found, that anyone had ever found. In the so, world. so you guys just got bombarded with <laughs> fame and viral videos that just happened with the Python, which I can't wait to talk about the damn fucking WWE manhandling shit you did out of nowhere, which that was really, really epic. But um, let's go back really quick. So first of all, how did you guys get into this? I, I mean, you, you guys, you know, you're some good looking kids. You're some college dudes. You don't seem like you're going to be out there wearing all kind of army uh, uh, fatigue and and hunting snakes in the middle of the Everglades. How how did this happen? Walk us through this. Want to go into that, Steve? Um, So Jake and I, we kind of started for two different reasons. Um, But one thing we had in common is there's this show called Guardians of the Glades where uh, this guy Dusty Crumb went out there and, you know, he caught a bunch of snakes and we'd watch it because we'd be up up at school and we wouldn't have anything outdoorsy to do. It's cold half the year. It's like gray and we we were getting homesick, so we were like, man, when we get back, we should give this a try. Uh, we always go out to this place called Picky and Strand, and we were like, oh, there's got to be some in there. We'll just go stomp around the brush and looking for them. And where is this at? Um, it's just southeast of uh, Naples. Okay. So it, it's like 30 minutes from us, but um, there's a lot of pythons out. Excuse me. There's a lot of pythons out there, but uh, you're not going to find them. It's way too thick of brush, but... Really, for me, I guess part of the reason I started with this was my biggest fear was snakes before I started doing this. So for me, I figured there's no reason I should be fe- like fearful of this stuff. I just got to tackle it, get out there, and it looked fun too. Just like you know, I and you and you, you guys, you guys are cousins. You told me that earlier. Yeah. You guys are cousins, but you're cousins who are pretty much like best friends yeah, as so well. You guys I are really spend close. More time with this kid than I do with my immediate family. I mean, but the best part is that we grew up and we've always had the same interest. So like we'd be out just fishing every day that we could um, get into a little bit of hunting, but mainly we grew up fishing and saltwater or freshwater, mostly saltwater, Okay, not big freshwater guys, but we'll go every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we heard about this Python hunting thing and we're like, that's really cool. And we don't know anybody who does that. So we should try it. And we thought it would be easy because everybody makes it look really easy. So before you go into that now, because I just found out about this, I told you that you told you guys that earlier, Tell people listening, especially Floridians who aren't aware of this, but tell people listening, what is this? Um, it's not a tournament, or is it? Is it considered a tournament or no? It's just, it's just a- Kind of like a tournament. So the um, Florida Annual Python Challenge, I think, is the- Python Bowl, some, something to that effect. Everybody calls it something different, but uh, okay. it's the, the Python Challenge that the FWC holds every year. Basically, it's a big open competition where they say that anybody in the state can come, register, and whoever catches the most pythons at the end of it will win ten thousand dollars. The most. The most. And There's then, also prizes for the biggest. Okay. Um, but they're you know not as much as the the grand prize, which is ten grand. So that's a significant amount of money. So they'll have thousands of hunters come out every year. Trying what to what, win what, what is the most that somebody has had killed? Uh, I don't know, but I remember last year someone caught twenty seven. That was the winner <laughs> in but, ten uh, days. In ten days, that's pretty impressive. Supposedly. So, see that's what I was gonna say, right? <laughs> Can't there be some shicey shit? I'm gonna I'm gonna say, Jake, you give me your snakes. I'm gonna combine it with my snakes. We'll fucking split this. Hey, like, I don't know how we won. I've I've never met the winner before, um, so I can't speculate on that. But I know um, FWC claimed he caught 27 snakes. But so. now, okay, but hold on now. Now during this tournament, we'll just call it a tournament for now or mm-hmm. competition. Um, during this competition, now isn't there a a, a bounty? Isn't there a, a, a just a low down bottom? So, bounty for any python killed so in Brock that's what somewhere, a lot of right? people ask me. They always think that we're getting paid out here for every snake we catch. So the way it works is there's the state of Florida has paid contractors that they budget in. They're, they're hired people. Okay. So they're going out and they're getting paid, I believe, minimum wage for every hour that they're out there. And then they're also getting paid per snake. 
What me and Steve do, complete amateur work. We do it because we have a lot of fun doing it. We also take people out on uh, paid tours. So we like teaching other people how to do it. But we're not government uh, government employees, basically. Mm-hmm. And it, it works out, too, because if we were contracted, we wouldn't be able to do this. You have to do any sort of media or press. You have to get approved by your respective program. So there's the South Florida Water Management Program, and there's the Florida Wildlife Commission Program, uh, which both do the paying uh, contractors for the pythons they catch. Yep. So those... Those so two I can't I can't go I can't go kill a few pythons get lucky bring it somewhere and, hey where's my twenty bucks ahead Oh you're gonna get paid zero dollars for that Yeah um, <laughs> Isn't it different But isn't it di- well I, yeah, What the fuck do I know I was gonna say you know when I was in Utah if you did that with a coyote's ear You get twenty dollars per pair oh, of really? ears Yes I've never and, heard I, of and that's, that's just, pretty cool That's just year round all the time because they're that much of a nuisance they're that much of a pest Like I would imagine if you wanted to. You know, Texas, we're, again, we're talking about it off cam. Te- uh, Florida, Texas, the southern states have a ginormous problem with wild hogs, mm-hmm. pythons being us number one, right, with pythons. Iguanas, that's pretty much Florida. We got lionfish, too. You got lots of invasive fish. Yeah, lionfish fish. out there right there. Yeah, Florida right. has a, lots of invasive that but, a lot of people don't and, know about. And yeah, but if they would entice people to be like like what I just said, the whole cow yo, if you would bring a, a, you know, a pair of cow yo ears, you get $20. That's enticing. That's somebody's like, oh, you know. So I think part of the reason that they do what they do is because python hunting takes a lot of hours to get good at, and you have to be very experienced to be skilled at it. Um, so those contracts. What are you going to tell to the people who laugh right now and say, "Get the fuck out of here! You, you're you just know, you're just catching pythons." I know, right? Jake. It doesn't. I mean, seem but you know they're hard. out there. You know somebody's trolling. I told you about my friend, my group of friends. One of those cocksuckers are talking shit about you right now, Jay. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, and I'm not going to tell you that his name is Chris. Okay, but Chris is saying, "What the fuck, Jake? You're just jumping on snakes. Why is it difficult? Try to school some of these people because you you guys told me it took y'all about a year of yep. goose eggs, a year of hunting, your first year." Mm-hmm. And also a little bit before that, and you didn't catch anything, mm-hmm. and then finally you got good at it. Okay, so where's the skill? What, what, what's, what's a quick crash course that you can tell people listening? Well, we were under the impression that you could just go out into the swamp and start walking around and catch a bunch of pythons in a day. I remember when what Steve was talking about, pick you and strand, our good off-roading spot. Mm-hmm. We would go out, We went out there, had a group of, uh, we had three trucks and I think like 10 dudes go out one day. We're like, I, bought, I think I bought 10 snake bags for that day because I was like, yeah, well, each truck will catch a few pythons. We didn't catch crap. Ten was, people, three trucks. We oh, saw yeah. two snakes. We hunted during the day. I think during winter time, it was like wrong time of year, wrong time of the day, using the wrong gear and the wrong methods, everything. So what people don't realize is, sure, these pythons are everywhere, but they're really hard to see. You need to be in the right areas mm-hmm. and you need to be doing the right hunting methods. And you need to have a trained eye for it because the whole name of the game for these snakes is camouflaging and staying hidden. So some, I, I would definitely want to, back you up on that i was yeah. telling you guys that my brother my brother's an avid spear fisherman and um i'm like probably i don't know three or four dives in with him you know i mean i've been snorkeling my whole life and all that but not like spear fishing spear fishing i'm probably maybe four or five fuck that i'm probably like eight dives in with him <laughs> and and i'm hovering over him and when he goes down and i'm like you know maybe 10 feet above him and we're hovering and i'm trying to see what he's gonna do how he's gonna do it and whatever whatever and he's down there and he starts pointing and I'm just looking right where he's pointing. I'm like, there's nothing there. Yeah. So you understand. <laughs> the fuck's he? Of course. Yeah. And then we go back up. You, you saw that, right? I'm like, no, what are you pointing at, Danny? I just see like fucking mush, a dirt, a rock, or whatever, coral. Dude, I'm going to go back there again. I'm going to point. He's going to be like 15 feet in front of me. Look really well. It's going to be a hog snapper, blah, 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 blah. He does it. I mean, he just baby walks me right through the whole thing. And I'm like, I don't see it. I don't fuck it. We go back up. He goes, you still don't see I don't see it. Bro, come right back down with I went side by side with him. I'm side by side with him. He points his gun. Not until that fucking hog like looked at us and damn near wink did I see him. And then <laughs> boom, he hits it. You do, you have to you, you grow a knife for these things. He oh, he, yeah. he knew what to find in in that camouflage. He's of put the in the time for it. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah. So that's a, how Python hunting a lot of times is is me and Steve will spot something and we'll say, Okay, it's right there, it's right next to whatever. We'll try and be descriptive. People will be like, There's nothing there. Well, there's pythons everywhere. The problem is seeing them. And it's not just the pythons. I mean, like, the other day we were driving. We uh, actually were filming with uh, 704 Outdoors, and um, we were just driving on the road, and there's this one snake called Scarlet Snake. It is 
white and red and black, like candy cane looking stripes, clear as day, like very hard to miss. And it was in the center of the road. Their lights go right over it. I'm like, guys, you, you just passed right over that. And they're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. It's clear as day. It's just people on a daily basis aren't looking for snakes mm-hmm. and stuff. So it's just it just doesn't register in their mind. They think like, oh, that's a stick we just passed. So on a daily basis when I'm walking around my yard, I'll see more snakes now because I have, course. have a train. Right, before. right. People don't realize there's snakes everywhere. Just like when they go to the beach and they say, oh, is there sharks here? There's always sharks there. Right, right. You're just not looking for them. So you guys started doing it as this hobby. You're having fun on these naked hunts because you're not catching shit pretty much, right? <laughs> no, I mean, for the most that part. That sucked. I mean, but we were, I, I imagine, okay, so first off, it, it seems like this is something that, that snuck up on you guys out of boredom, watching watching YouTube or watching certain channels. It sounded so cool. Kind of, right, and then you wanted to do it. But have you have you guys always been nature boys? Have you oh, guys yeah, always yeah. really liked, you oh, know, yeah. glade type shit, fishing type shit, outdoors yeah, type shit? Yeah, we didn't have much experience with the Everglades, but we've always been fishing. Um, I'd spend a lot of hours on Stevie's boat going out deep sea, and... The snake thing sounded cool. I watched a lot of Steve Irwin as a kid, Mm -hmm. and I was always really interested in snakes. So what Steve mentioned earlier about us joining for different reasons, he wanted to get over his fear of snakes, and I was super interested in snakes. So it was like the perfect team, and we tried for a long time, and we wouldn't quit. We wouldn't let each other quit. We wanted to catch that first python. And then once we caught our first python, we were even more hooked. Like, we just wanted to go out and catch more pythons. And and this is now only – this is just a summer thing right now because you guys are away for school. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. And so you come in the summer, and it's like, all right, put your fucking shit kickers on. Let's go, yeah. right? Something like that. Mm-hmm. And, and then do you start right away the minute you get off and you're, you're over here back back home? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like. Early June or May? So we usually start in May, but um, both of us were gone for June. So, like, Jake got back a couple days before me, and I was I was in the Philippines for a month. So as I was landing on my plane, Jake sent me these pictures, that record breaker he got. So, like, as soon as I got off the plane – we, we got right into this, like, news, uh, hunts, guided hunts, like, going on our own. Just, like, as soon as we get back, it's just go. So you missed being there for the record? Just by, like, a few Oh, hours. my God. I I, Steve, I know that's, ha- that's haunting you. Uh, oh. no. it's, it's, <laughs> like, it's, like, crushing because, like, he's been my partner through everything. I know. He's supposed to be there. We've hunted together 99.9% of the time, and he wasn't there for this one hunt and ended up catching the record breaker. The good thing is... We have a damn good memory last year together of catching a 17-foot, 10-inch python. That was one of the best nights of my life. We both jumped on that snake. He jumped on the head, and I jumped on the body. I think that was, like, the biggest adrenaline rush of my life because that was the first big snake I had seen. Well, would it be safe to say, not that we're trying to encourage idiots out there to, to do this shit, but, yeah, we're, we're kind of schooling them a little bit. <laughs> Once it's past a certain length, though... Either one of you guys or somebody who's got the balls enough and who has a strong enough grip, though you can jump on it, you know, by its neck and hold it. Is it safe to say that after a certain length, you need a second person to help you because that snake will wrap itself around you? He will eventually I win. Don't, I don't go because that's hunting. like jujitsu, man. You taking this motherfucker? He's just oh, trying yeah. to wrap everything he could. I don't go snake hunting alone because there's always stuff that could happen out there, um, and it's not just snakes. Uh, you could. Some sketchy shit could happen out there with some people. Right. Well, your, I want to get into that as well. Breakdown, whatever. But, you but, but, you but, don't but, want to be in the swamp alone. But how would you gauge? I, I get that, obviously. And I, and I definitely want to talk about your experiences in the swamps. But gauging, now that you've experienced so many, um, whatever, grappling against a snake, you know, when you catch one, obviously you're literally grappling against it for yeah. the time being. If it's a certain size, I know you feel like I got this. I don't. I don't need nobody. I got this. Uh-huh. I got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certain, blah, blah, blah. but now once it's like, oh shit, no, 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 I got this. But somebody better come grab the the, the tail oh, end, or or it's gonna fucking choke me. Yeah. Well, I think I think it also depends on the situation, how much experience you have. Also, so like that eighteen footer Jake mentioned last year, that was clear as day in the middle of the road. Like, um, and just three weeks prior, I had experience with a monster snake. Uh, it was seventeen six that took five of us to haul out of the swamp. So like. For me, I probably Damn. I wrestling that eighteen footer, I I'm confident I could have done that alone because of just it wasn't anywhere near where I could get leverage on the road. But the seventeen six, that was another big snake where we weren't both together. Jake was gone. Yeah, for that so he one. got one without me. So where are you? Uh, this is the payback. Oh, yeah. he, he but he broke up, a record. He won't help me. <laughs> but um yeah, no, it took five of us to halt the seventeen and a half footer out of the swamp. And when I say five, I mean like if there were four of us, that snake was getting away. 
Like it, it was wrapping around trees and brush. Yeah, you just stuff. feel that fucking incredible Hulk strength, right? Yeah. To, off a little wrap around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Once, once a snake. I mean, we say less than eleven feet is very manageable for one person. You start getting more than that, especially if you don't have experience, you're you're in for it because that thing is strong. Right. Really strong. I I I, I remember a fond memory of mine. Maybe st it was stupid though, but whatever. <laughs> you know how we are when we're younger. Um. I was visiting my homeboy, one of my closest friends, Jason Giyu, and I was, you know, walking back and forth fishing, peacock fishing in the canal. And I came across the back end of a snake, a water moccasin. And it was a big water moccasin because I came across at least two and a half feet sticking out on the the, 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 the grass. Yeah. But his other half was down in the water mm -hmm. in whatever, I don't know. And anyhow, I saw it and I'm like, I want to cast this motherfucker. And I, and I had a bad day of fishing. I ran out of my bait and I had the bucket. I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna empty the bucket out. So I emptied the bucket and I grabbed this thing by the, I'm telling you, I got a good grip, like tug of war. Like I got a good two feet grip on his back end. All he did was he wrapped around a, a, a like a vine. It was like a, like a, it was a vine that I would never have a chance of pulling out. This vine has been growing from the canal up uh, outside the water. It's almost like a tree plant of a mm -hmm. sort. So there's no way I could deroute that. So, but that's how he's anchored. He just wrapped around it, and I can see he only has like maybe like a triple loop, you know, maybe like one, two, three. Yeah. And I was stuck there for like eight minutes, arms burning. I cannot get make. I couldn't make him get loose. What was your end goal with that? I just wanted to see him. I wanted to get him out and just see him. Yeah, you're. Yeah, I know it was stupid. I, that's why I said. <laughs> Shit, yes, man. Yeah, I know. I know. I've done some stupid shit in the past, bro. <laughs> I, 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 I admit it. Uh, I, I just guess I, I guess I felt like I'll be fast enough. I knew it was a water moccasin. I knew no, I didn't. I wasn't positive, but I knew it was either that or You're crazy. A, a difference. Yeah, I, no, that was just stupid. <laughs> it really was. It was stupid. But anyhow, the moral of that story is, I felt the strength of a fucking small ass snake. It's it, you know his, his grip strength just sitting there. My body weight at one eighty or whatever it was at that young age. And me pulling it, I could not budge him. It took my friends to come and do all kind of other shit. And eventually, we got him out. And that's how yeah. we found out it was a water moccasin. But I can only imagine what. Uh, and that's just that's just a, a snake that has powerful muscles because it swims. Think about a snake that is that's true. trained to constrict its prey. It, the, it its whole yes lifeblood of being able to hunt out there right. is its muscles, and it it doesn't have any venom, so it's got to constrict. So, yeah, you deal with a python over 10, 11 feet. You're dealing with. It's a 10, 11 foot muscle. Is, as is, far as I'm concerned, the whole thing's a damn muscle. Have you been? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I would say the same thing, right? And it can um, move in weird ways that like mammals can't. So it's like, it's a weird type of wrestling. I love when you see these fucking things climb trees, but yeah. straight up and down. I'm not talking yeah. about a slanted one, straight up and down. Snakes are just weird. What? They're um, weird animals, but they're cool. That's why I love going out and seeing them. Are you Are you guys, have you been contacted or are you going to get contacted by the, uh, the world record people? Guinness? I didn't even bother contacting them because I think they have their own, uh, you know, record uh, confirmers. I honestly, I don't know. If I they wanted it bad enough, they can come find. I don't you know guys, if so. they do fish and game records, so I didn't really bother contacting Ooh, them. Ooh, that's a good. Yeah. Point. I'm just happy enough yeah. that I got the conservancy to confirm it for me. And if you look up world record Burmese python, he already pops up on Google. Really? Yeah. Wow. I bet I wouldn't be surprised if somebody in. Southeast Asia ended up catching one a few years ago that was bigger. The thing is, we were just able to confirm this record. So right. this is the biggest Burmese python that they know of on record. Right. We believe there could be a 20-footer out there, though. This suggests the idea that they can get 20 feet. A lot of people speculated that maybe it wasn't possible. I think it's entirely possible. How long? The Everglades is a big place. So you yeah, gotta about, man. You got to think about how much of Plus, they're eating everything. There's only a yeah. couple roads that run in these areas that are infested by pythons. So think about the places that we're not going where there's just some giant snake sitting in there. By the way, can you guys tell people uh, watching or listening how bad of a problem are pythons? Like, just, just how bad? What is it that they're doing to our Everglades, our waters, our national parks in regards to species and everything else? Well, just to take a small sample of Everglades National Park, because... The Everglades consists of multiple national parks and state parks, but just Everglades National Park, the federal one, since the pythons have been introduced, um, well, I mean, they weren't introduced. They were released or they got out through, like, Hurricane Andrew. But um, the EMP, Everglades National Park, is 99% devoid of all of its small mammals since they've That's uh, how bad started breeding there. 
You think about all the mice, what rats, was the rabbits, ninety nine percent have been decimated. They're gone. You will not see a raccoon. You will not see a possum. You will not see a rabbit in Everglades National Park. This is a place that is holy one of the most shit. Previously, one of the most biodiverse places in the entire world. And now you think about all those mammals, and especially the birds, too. So, you know, so it's just snakes and fucking gators, pretty much. I mean, there's still a lot of cool stuff. I, I wouldn't doubt it. If someone wants to go there and visit, you're going to have a good time seeing a lot of cool wildlife. But think about what it was like 30 years ago when right. there was just so much more crawling around. So the pythons are a huge problem. Huge. And have you, are you guys seeing boars when you do your hunts? Are you hearing them? Or are they not that deep over here? We know they're in the Everglades. I've never but. seen one. Steve's seen a couple. I've, I've seen I've seen them twice while out there. But um, between the panthers and the gators, and now the pythons too, they they they, they need to find somewhere else where it's yeah, they, easier oh, to survive. It's, uh, Everglades is a scary place to be a pig because there's a lot of crap that can eat you. Damn. So well, I mean, and they, they need to be dealt with. And also that's one of the well. reasons why in Texas they just run wild because. There's not a whole lot in Texas that's eating these things. Yeah, man, I've seen I've seen the fucking helicopter, goddamn. Swooping yeah. down Dude, with oh, automatic. Yeah, you gotta worry about some motherfucker in a in, with no, an but I'm AR-15 saying, but it, in a helicopter. Yeah, and even no, that's their natural predator. And Here even even games. then, they're still not putting a dent in the fucking population. Oh no, there's yeah. just too many of them. That's crazy though. Like when 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 do we just say Our, okay, everybody spread out with fucking ARs, yeah. and we're just all gonna mob straight, and we're just gonna trap them? Like, like when does Basically, that happen? Our python problem is their pig problem. Right. The difference right. is those pigs are so easy to see. These pythons, it's like the threat you don't know about until you start tr- and being put in the hours out there and then you realize damn they're just everywhere and the pigs at least you can do something like you can eat the pigs pythons nobody's eating that stuff it's nasty have you guys tried it not we yet. have not we might eventually we've we've cleaned get ready one of my other boys just talk shit about both of you guys right now <laughs> <laughs> okay. man they're not even eating the shit okay. Wes. Right. what the fuck so, you know, we as as outdoorsmen growing up uh, you know, it's it's very wrong to kill an animal if you're not going to use part of it. So, of course, we learned right? To, I like that. What we learn to do is skin these snakes, and we learn to make our own leather out of them. So we do our own products. It's really fun doing it, uh, and you get to use an animal, so you don't feel bad just massacring Burmese pythons all the time. Uh, and, you, and you don't do anything with the meat at all. It's not. I mean, you I guys don't. taste. No, you don't like it. I mean, Bro, I've seen some good snake so fucking videos. Super high in mercury because you got to think about how much they're eating to get that big. Oh, good so point. Very good high point. If, if, good point. If we ate all the Burmese pythons we caught and we catch a lot of Burmese pythons, think about how much mercury we'd be getting in us every right. week. Right, that is true. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. I would try it for fun one time, but it's not known to taste great. And more so than the taste is is the texture that people don't like. It's supposed to be like a car tire. Like it's chewy tough. as can be. It's tough. Yeah. You guys ever go gigging? Am I saying that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, not for frogs, but for mullet. You say mullet? It. Yeah. <laughs> what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, like the fish. No, I know, I know, I'm, and I've I've never had mullet. I've heard mixed mixed reviews of mullet. Oh, I love it. It's good. You really? Make, you make yeah. mullet dip. You smoke it. You make mullet dip. That's really. But the your only dad way fried it. it one time, and I it loved it. I thought yeah. it was good. Mm-hmm. Damn, you guys it's, gonna make me try it. Yeah, man. because they're everywhere, so people think they're just kind of a shit fish, like maybe more of a. Baby. But hold on, how are you gigging them? You, you're going with an electrical shock, and you you get them while they're on top. What, what no, are we doing? So, oh, right no, on no, the no. boat, we have these lights, and we have our big long, like ten, at least ten foot long gig, and we're just waiting there till they swim through the lights. And you know, usually they're like in the schools, they're just popping a little top. But the gig is what? What it's is? It's not that? electric. It's just a spear. it's, yeah, just, it's like it's, a, like, a, it's like a trident. But you got you have to jam it. Yeah, it doesn't oh, yeah. eject on oh, its yeah. own. No, no, no. Correct. You got it's. It's not like a Hawaiian sling. Is there's no electricity? And they're that dumb when they're a, coming up to the light where you can just jam some prongs. Yeah, on. with three or yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah, well, that's why you have that long pole because they might stay 10, 15 feet away from that boat. Oh, but, but you have enough to cover the distance. Yeah, you have to cover that distance. So I mean, you have your ten foot long pole. Maybe it reaches three feet, two, three feet, or whatever, depending on the size of you. You can reach out and get some. I'm gonna have to try. I'm gonna try some mullet, man. But honestly, the easiest way to get them is in a cast net. Yeah, <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, you just throw it over a big bunch of mullet. Now you got dinner for the next two nights. <laughs> so you guys do that often? Then you eat mullet. Damn, I, I'm gonna. Really, I'm, I'm no, gonna talk to my honestly, brother. Like, yo, I like the idea of making mullet smoke, smoke mullet dip. I like that. Eating it, probably not. My brother spears amazing fish. Yeah. So we're spoiled with what we eat. Oh yeah. So mullet's so, not mullet's not gonna be top, so, but I like the, uh, mullet dip, smoke dip. Yeah, oh, yeah smoke fish smoke sounds mullet. good. Yeah. So that's g- kind of uh, our perspective too. Is we catch so many other great fish, like we we go out grouper fishing and we'll catch snapper. Yeah, yeah, too. yeah. I mean, that's the best of the best. Yeah. So we love eating that stuff, but um, every once in a while, yeah, we'll just decide to uh, throw the cast net over some mullet, and we're like, yeah, we throw them in the smoker, they're good. 
Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescription is required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. So listen, I remember we were talking about off, off camera. I was, I'm intrigued by the whole thing, you know, obviously the, the, the hunting, the, the stories, the reptiles, everything. And then of course, I'm a, I'm a UFO guy in case you didn't, in case you didn't know this with my little alien buddies over what? here. Um, you guys are out there late night. You guys are out there when there's no city lights that's making, you know, that's dimming the nightness, you know? So you're, you're in, not pitch black, but you're really, really dark. You know, like, I don't know if anybody out there or you guys yourself, have you ever been to somewhere like the middle of Arizona, the middle of the desert, or even deep sea fishing, the middle of the fucking ocean yeah, when yeah. everything's turned, oh my God, that's eerie, right? You know? Yeah, uh -huh. So you guys are out there where if you were going to see something, you were going to see something. Or on a, on a different level, maybe some weird creature type, you know, activity. What are some... I don't know, intrigue us with some stories or some shit that you guys might have witnessed, almost witnessed, or maybe what's, is there a Bigfoot? Is that full of shit, you know? Is there tribes doing crazy shit out there or what kind of shit is happening out there? There's a big statue out there that whenever we're passing by it with lights and we have peop new people with us, they'll shine their light on, they'll go, oh, shit. <laughs> And I'm like, hey, guys, it's just a statue. <laughs> oh, so you don't let them know that it's coming up. So, yeah, yeah, I never yeah. let them know. And then they're yeah. just, they're like, because you're, you're That's looking, dirty. You're at, That's you're, so you know, dirty, you're dude. You're cruising at like 10 miles an hour the whole time, and you're saying grass, 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 Bigfoot. And they're like, fuck. Sasquatch. <laughs> fucking A. No, no, you got to get them ready. When you know you're going to get close, you got to be like, we heard there were some sightings around here. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you guys are ready. <laughs> oh, Tomorrow just, night on our tour. So we dude, have to do that. yeah. We and have then to. you got to get it on camera. I'm telling you, man. We have to. Someone's, someone's content there. But uh, no, but yeah, but what what else? What, what are some other wild shits that, you know, you guys might have gone through or seen or anything like that out there? Um, So, I mean, usually most of our stories are with people. Um, Usually. We'll get to that later. But, like, one of the things that, like, probably, probably freaked me out the most is, you know, this we hunt right on a major highway, um, and we're going by, and we're hunting slowly along, but, I mean, there's people cruising at 60, 70 miles an hour, and we were cruising along looking for snakes, and there's this one car just parked in the middle of the road, lights completely off, guy passed out in the front seat. I mean, we thought he was dead. Dude looked, like, pale. We're, like, shining lights at him, like, hey, man, you okay? You okay? And he's not responding or nothing. All we saw is he did, like, this jerk back with his head like he, uh, it was like, I don't know, maybe puking in his mouth or something. Oh, we were like, we don't even know what's going on. Like, right. Because we, we didn't even want to mess with it, but uh, we just cruised along. But, I mean, there's there's so many irresponsible people. Doing so, do you know what the end story was with that? I don't know the end story. All I all I know is that, like, I did not want to deal with it. <laughs> I wonder where people feel indifferent about this, right? Because... You know, you got your your little holy woly whatever Captain Save him, who's so gonna be like, you know, you should have stayed there. You should have called the cops. You should have well, made sure. What if this? What if that? What if he was drunk and he starts driving again and he can kill somebody? We so, also don't have cell service. So there. you got you got to think about a few things out there. And I go through this conflict because, as you know, young guys like we are, like we want to leave society a better place. And by, and by the way, say again, Jake, how old are you guys again? So I'm 22. 22. 21. I'm 21. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So you got to think about you want, I'm out there. I'm, I, I like helping people, but you got to respect your own safety at one point. So I remember one story I was driving home. I agree. That could be a setup right there. Yeah. So with my buddy yep. Peyton and I see this car broken down and these guys obviously look in distress, uh, but they just looked like there was something weird about it. I remember this was about a year ago. And I was like, okay, I'm going to stop and pull over. And Peyton goes, I don't know. Hold on. Hold off on that. Like, just let's, let's look at it for a second. And he's like, I don't know. Something feels weird about it. Just try pass. I was like, are you sure? He's like, we're out in the middle of nowhere. There's no cell service. There's no witnesses. It's dark out. Something feels weird about it. And I just drove past. And he said that he went out there a few weeks later. So the same guy, same car doing the same thing. Oh, shit. And so you got to think about the fact that you're out there with nobody else. If someone wanted to ambush you, they absolutely could. So be a helper when it's your time to be a helper, but also respect the fact that don't get taken advantage of. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. So I if, totally if you agree. don't have backup and you don't have people with you and you're not, um, you know, carrying some sort of protection on you, 
just be mindful that that there are uh, there are users and there are there are bad people everywhere. On so, on that note, are you guys always carrying? I am, yeah. So are, I'm, uh, I'm licensed to do that, but um, you're not licensed, I, Steve. Not yet. I just turned 21, so I haven't bought my first. Uh, so we'll get this kid in a guns. No. I was thinking of going. You turn 21 when? Uh, in April, but I mean, I I didn't get back until mid May, and then I was gone at the beginning of June. By the way, quick side step: What were you doing in Indonesia? Uh, I was in the Philippines. Philippines, so, sorry. So I got accepted out of high school into medical school. And I don't have to take the MCAT. I don't have to apply. Ooh. And part of the um, gig of that system is, or that uh, program is instead of applying and doing the MCAT, I'll do something that, like, enriches my education instead. So I went over to the Philippines doing uh, medical service work, and I was working with, like, rural medical communities. Damn, that's gnarly, dude. How long were you there for? 40 days. Wow. Yeah. And I don't want to fucking say this in the wrong way. Was this, like, in a impoverished community or was this regular deal you know hospitals or what are we talking about here um so not hospitals um there was one hospital on the island they didn't even have a surgeon on the island very Shit. impoverished i mean they didn't have flushing toilets they didn't have showers we were using buckets oh my goodness um, but i mean like bucket you were bucket you were squatting for 40 days yeah, i mean <laughs> <laughs> steve <laughs> yeah. steve yeah. damn bro <laughs> Come on, but, I mean, uh, listen, you're a great guy and all that, but that's life altering, dude. When you I mean, tell somebody, I fucking <laughs> squatted over a bucket and took a shit for 40 days, man. That's intense, dude. <laughs> oh, no, 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 sorry. I meant bucket showers. They, they, oh, they start, shit. Yeah. Okay, okay. Like the yeah. same bucket that you were shitting. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> washed out, though. Washed out, though. For sure. Shower bucket, then shit bucket, okay? Holy shit, that is too intense. Okay, okay. So you were bird bathed in a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, I've um, been there. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's super Damn, simple. that was funny, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Go it's ahead. Super simple living, though. Everyone's super happy, and you realize, like, we're we're fortunate here for sure. Like, we mm. we have way more than we need. You just gotta be great. Changes your life, right? Big yeah. time the way you look yeah. at things. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. That's awesome. You, you tend to go back in some shape or form, or is it was that was just that experience, and now I mean, on to the next or whatever. Doing what I did there, probably not for the same like reason, but I do mm. plan on going back someday because I mean, it's just like. I feel like connection there. I spent so much time, and it's a beautiful country. Awesome. Did you people. did you pick up a little bit of the language? A little bit. I mean, oh, just, that shit just sounds just difficult. Couple, just a couple words, just enough to like you know, order food and stuff. Don't say I'm probably gonna lie. Just go ahead, do it. Order the food. Let me hear it. Oh, well, I mean, like shit. <laughs> I mean, like so. All the, all the food. <laughs> I won't even know if you're lying, bro. Yeah. Just try. Well, I mean, like, so, like, <laughs> I'll just tell you this: like after, after every word you say. Or every sentence you say pull, it's like respect. So like say you order your food at the end you go salamat pull, which means like thank you respectfully. Or like someone Po as in P O or like P O L. Like the sound. P O Po. Yeah. So that would come off after every like statement or, or sentence or request? Pretty much. Yeah. And that's, so that's like blah 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 respectfully. Yeah. Can you give me a beer? Respectfully. Yep. Uh, some, oh, and you okay. say that for literally everything. Like, oh can I get a cab? <laughs> respectfully. Oh, can uh where's the restroom? Respectfully. Everything. Do they have beer over there? They do. It's good. They have this one called Red Horse. It's like strong. It's like an IPA, but it's a lager. It's darn good. Nice, nice. So, okay, so we're back in the Everglades. Yeah. That was funny, though. God damn, that was funny. <laughs> I needed that. That was funny. Um, What about you? He said some of his stories. You, Jake, have you had anything weird or seen anything weird? Just people acting strange every once in a while. Just stuff that looks out of the ordinary. Shiesty, like illegal. Yeah, like I said, like I like to, I like to help people when I can. Um, but you got to know when you're, when's your time. And, um, you know, luckily I've never come up on any car crashes out there. I don't have any medical experience. So thank God I haven't had to save anybody, anything life threatening. Um, but, uh, I would say that no UFO spottings, you know, I saw something weird the other night that was like a, like a, like a bright light like a plane almost, but it was going really, really slow and just kind of like hovering. And then it just like took off. So like. I don't know. It could it, it could have seen it weird, you know. When you're cr you got to think about when you're cruising for this long looking for snakes, and then you stop real quick, you're you're uh, you kind of get like a little hypnosis vision. Oh, I get it. I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah. When you're cruising for a long time, because like, you're like just so when you're, when you're so intensely yeah, focused on the side yeah. of the road for so long, and then you stop, you take it and off, and everything's just super wavy. Hundred yeah, yeah. like, percent got tree, you. Trees will just yeah. start waving side to side, and you're like, oh my god, my my vision's messed up. So, okay, so it could have been something like... It's a, crazy how the mind does yeah, that, bro. it could have been like it a really meteorite is. burning up in the atmosphere, but I don't know, there's just something strange about it. But 
that's kind of the cool thing about being out there is like you never know what you're going to see, whether it's something in the sky, something on the ground, some kind of wildlife, some kind of person <clears throat> acting strange. I just love uh, the element of the unknown out there. Right, right. Pretty, uh, you might just end up on a 19-foot snake, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like well. you just never know. And, I mean, that's that's what Jake saw. Um, I didn't really get to see it, but – we have buddies out there who've seen stuff. So the other day, yeah, I was gonna go to that now. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, okay, you know, you guys are still, you guys are doing summers. This is like your third or fourth summer. Yeah. But now you you've gotten close to a community of people who do it more often out there. What are their stories talking about? Yeah. So the other day there was this buddy of ours. His name is Dre, and uh, there's this like abandoned airport facility, which it was supposed to be. I think like the biggest airport in the world. I think it was supposed to like replace Atlanta or something. Gonna have like six lane highways going to Miami and Naples. Crazy stuff. Basically environmentalists got on it, shut it down. So now it's like an abandoned airport that's sometimes used for training. But he was out there python hunting, and he got this all on uh, video and pictures and stuff. So he posted it on his Instagram story, and it was this light with a bunch of, like a string of smaller lights behind it. And he said he saw it, like, shoot off one way, and then a sharp angle shot up into the sky and disappeared. Um, he's and got all that on it's video? Weird. It looks weird, man. Yeah. It's he, he's, he's another he's another snake hunter. Oh yeah, yeah he's a good one too. Nice, nice. Yeah, he's a but, he's, but, a, he's a contractor. But you guys aren't fully convinced yet, though. On your own, we talked about that oh, earlier, I right? Like, I, you, guess you, I don't I don't take as much time speculating as you do. So like maybe if I really dug into what it, what are you accusing me of, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm accusing you of being interested. I'm, not, I'm interested in this sort of thing. Yes, yes. No, Look, I spend my time researching snakes. You research UFOs. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Good. Uh, uh, what's it called? Touche. Right there. There you go. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's true. Um, no, and I understand. I, you know, for for people not to be on board like that. Again, we talked about it earlier. Just just don't discredit the real people. Like, don't discredit your boy. Right. Like, remember we were talking about discrediting discrediting people who don't deserve to be discredited. So oh, yeah. if your boy came across that. He let's say he's been out there for you know eight to ten years, always in the you know super nice guy, and this is one or one or one or one of two times that he's ever seen something, and he got this video. Don't discredit that man. Like if he oh, was high yeah. or, or being stupid or, or making up shit, you know. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. I am totally open to the idea of uh, aliens being out there, mm. or UFOs, or you know whatever it is. I just don't do enough research where I could like have a real deep debate about it. Now, definitely, and I know, <clears throat> again, we laughed this off earlier, nothing, <sighs> nothing, not even a hint, not even a smell, not even a sighting, not even nothing of a fucking Bigfoot, or, or as we call it in South Florida, a swamp ape. So, for us, It's no. a good-ass beer, by the way, if you've never had swamp ape IPA beer. Really? Oh, no, I've never tried it. Find it. Oh, I will. so good. Go ahead. Um, so, we haven't seen anything like that, but I mean, we know tons of people who have stories, and there's this one contractor we hunt with, his name's Matt Kogo, and... Um, he has this story about seeing something that was, you know, standing a few feet out of the brush. And, you know, that sawgrass there, it's a good three to four feet tall. Right, at right. Least. So, yes, yes. Know, a few feet on top of that. So <clears throat> something large. And he said he saw it going through the brush about 20 miles an hour, but he couldn't tell what it was. But as far as in terms of, like, Bigfoot skunk ape stuff, because usually they say skunk, uh, skunk ape is supposed to be a little smaller and stinky. This is the most we have that we've heard. like From, so, from that friend. Yeah. <clears throat> what about any wild animal type encounters? Maybe even you know something that I'm hooked on watching, bro. When these animals become friends and they're like supposed to eat each other or something, you know, one of those type of ordeals, or like a raven becomes best friends with a fucking house dog. Like I see, I I just oh, actually, I melt actually, for that shit, yes, bro. We got a video of this. Um, we saw a snake and a little gator right next to each oh, other. Oh yeah, kind of facing off. We got a video of it. Um. Facing Bro, off, not vibing. They were facing off. It was off. weird. It was kind of weird. So I thought. <laughs> so when we walked up to this um, little shallow water area, I saw this snake that I thought. Uh, I'm sorry, this little gator was only about two feet long, and it, it. I thought it had a gator in its mouth. Your snake in its mouth. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a gator that I thought had a snake in its mouth. Right. We walked up to it and we realized this snake is perfectly alive, and this gator is perfectly alive. We're just right next to each other, face to face, about an inch apart from their noses. Just right next to each other in the water. And you'd think that gator would just eat it up right away, right? It's like a little water snake, easy prey. They would typically eat those. Super weird. I don't know. It was kind of cool that we got it on video because I had never seen anything like that. And I didn't really know what they were doing. Have you? Uh, can you guys verify this or not, whether you've seen it or you uh, live or maybe even on videos? The videos that I've seen when, when <clears throat> uh, I don't want to say crocs, but I'm going to say gators. When gators come across the wrong snake, which has happened very often, not that they're going to get eaten, no. They try to eat the python. 
Yeah, yeah, they'll eat pythons for sure. I know they did. I definitely know that they do. But I've seen several different videos where they ate. They tried to bite a python that was too long, and that python ended up it. choking it. Well, it didn't eat it, but it choked the gator so much that the gator let loose of the python. The python got away. That, yeah. that, that's really it. I'm not saying that the python. What I'm saying is, it seems like if the if the python is of a certain size. The gator can't really eat it because that yeah. python will choke it out That's before it becomes it can eat a fair it. fight. Like when you get yeah. an evenly matched python with a gator, it's really interesting. Steve sent me a video of it uh, about a year ago, and it's it's like really interesting to see a gator fight a python because it's an even fight. Now, when you get have you guys come across pythons with small gators in their bellies? No, um, not yet. Oh, no, no, we we did. What was that one that we came across? It was the one we caught with Nick Kratka, and it had all the gator vertebrae still in its track. Oh, shit. Oh, you're right. It did. Connected? Uh, like like a, like a spinal cord? No, it had like, a, you know, a little like a armory scoots. scoots on the back of a gator. Like, yeah. They yeah. got really tough armor. Yeah, 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 yeah. And got the, you. The, one, the, the, the armor plates that run down the spine are like, it's, hard, it's hard for the um, the python, its stomach has to break it down, so it'll stay in its in, intestinal tract. And when we skinned this thing and gutted it, we found these uh, little gator scoots, and we thought that was kind of interesting. You it guys, o- it was only about a seven foot python too, so it must have eaten a little gator. Wow, wow! You you, you said that um, pretty much ninety nine percent of the, the other species have been decimated, right? Mammals, yeah, yeah small mammals. Mammals. Mm-hmm. Um, does that include armadillos? Are armadillos you can't see them anymore in our areas at all, or do they you get know, by? Armadillos like to hang out in drier areas, mm-hmm. so the Everglades a little bit too wet, too swampy. I don't know if they really have the data on armadillos yet but really i've definitely gone swamp bugging um back when i was younger yeah and we definitely saw a couple of armadillos mm-hmm. in the drier areas it was when we got away from the wetter areas yeah. but they were definitely in the glades so that's why i was just i don't like, know if they're eating armadillos i wouldn't be surprised if they do though i mean they eat everything their stomach it's acid is insanely powerful so they can eat some crazy stuff like gators and, and digest that so i wouldn't be surprised if they can digest an armadillo we haven't found an anaconda here, right? Because I know we have the temperature, we have the waters, we have, you know, we have where you know the Amazonian type, you know, everything. They could support an anaconda for but sure. But we haven't, they haven't found one in Florida, have so they? They found a few released pets. Oh but, uh, lordy, if that happens, no, no established breeding populations. Of right. Anaconda, so that's when they get bad is when they start making a nest, and then then you're screwed. I will say this though, and this is this is kind of our conspiracy. So late past week or so there's been a few articles floating around about like oh there might be green anacondas in Fakahatchee strand this that and the other but there's also been these bills floating around the florida senate where they're trying to make it illegal to own certain reptiles so u.s arc which is i think it's like the association of reptile keepers or something okay um they've been kind of like hey why are these floating around there's been no catches and recent time like in the past however many years we have people who are out there every night they're not seeing them why are these articles floating around so they're thinking and not to not to point any fingers but they're thinking that someone's trying to push out these articles to get certain bills passed through congress or the state congress so they're making up rumors like there might be anacondas out there in order for people to make the rule where we can't have fancy pets or whatever pretty much yeah there's, uh, big you know, a lot of this whole crazy shit started during the cocaine cowboy days, right? Did oh, you guys yeah. know that? Because I know you guys are you guys are young. If you want to see a great documentary, watch Cocaine Cowboys. Okay. I mean, it's, it's what's it on? It'll tell you. Uh, it should be on Netflix. Oh, cool. Um, one of the best. Anybody will argue one of the best documentaries ever, especially if you're from Florida, especially if you're from Miami, because it literally shows you that holy shit, this city was built off of illegal drug money, <laughs> straight up. They push the old people aside and whatever. Anyhow, during that whole pissing contest of drug lords that were in South Florida doing the whole, if you guys remember, the, I don't know if you've seen it. I hate to talk like you guys are Scarface. so young, but you're young. yeah, Scarface, <laughs> yeah. those type of days. When all these drug dealers were here, you know, it's always a pissing contest. So they were all buying exotic animals from oh, across yeah. the world in order to flex and the next fucking drug dealer, like, well, I got a tiger in my backyard, bitch. I got a <laughs> gator in mine. I, you know, and all these exotic animals were coming, and it was when they were catching them, or they were, you know, the heat was on, they were releasing them, and all that stuff. So this, this is when South Florida became such an epic center of wild animals that were invasive. It wasn't like the natural 
progressive shit that would happen like on the Galapagos Islands where some fucking bird brought a snake and dropped it yeah, while yeah. flying over, you know, something like that. Funny, I just saw a little docuseries and it was about al albatross. Am I saying that right? Yeah, an albatross. Yeah, the, the, the bird that can... I did not know so many details about that fucking bird, bro. That bird is like pterodactyl. Like yeah. it's fucking, it can fly all the way around the world pretty much. Really? Yes. Yep. And and the survival yeah. rate for, yeah, the survival rate for when it has a nest is almost like turtles trying to leave the island. Like it was, it was pretty epic. I'm like, damn, okay. And, and then they just, all they do is, try, they're always flying mm -hmm. and they're not wing flappers. They, they do a lot of. Hovering through, Lighting, uh, yeah. yeah, dude, it was crazy, man. I was, you know, I, I'm very again why why I reached out to you guys. I'm very intrigued by this animal world and and uh, people who do things that are most, you know, uh, what percentage of people in the world snake hunt? <laughs> what, what, what would you think, Bob? What, what do you hell, think? I don't a know. fraction of a but fraction. You know what? Of a it makes like, like probably not even one so percent. Like we, probably not even one percent. So I guarantee to, you. Yeah, we go to college up north, so I go to Ohio State. Steve goes to Siena College up in Albany, New York, and tell you it makes for good stories that hell have. yeah they're like oh yeah we're snake hunters you know like, little little, pa little panty dropper <laughs> 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 and then you get girls who are like oh that's gross i hate snakes like, okay. yeah you know it's funny i was i was, <laughs> I was telling steve earlier when, when you went to use the restroom earlier um i asked him i said hey do you have a lady do you guys got ladies in your in your lives and he says well he didn't answer for you so i still don't know but he said that he didn't and I said, good, dog. You know, you don't need to do that. Uh, and then right away, I felt like, oh, man, I sound like a pig. You know, like, no, that's not, I'm not, definitely not trying to say that at all. It's, it's great to be in love. It's great to have a great woman. The same way you got great friends, yeah. cousins, whatever. It's always great to have a partner to do things in life with. But it has to be the right partner, right? Mm -hmm. You guys are like best friends, even though you're cousins. But if, if it was opposite, you you wouldn't have this bond. You might love each other, but you, you would not have this bond that you guys have. We, got, we talk about it all the time. We're really lucky that... We grew up with each other because Nobody I wouldn't be able to do up. this crap without, you know, without Steve. Like, right. like we learn how to snake hunt together. We learn how to do a lot of different fishing together, uh, everything. So it's like really cool. It, I mean, he's the only other guy I know that would be willing to stay out in the glades all night without seeing anything because we're just so into this outdoor stuff. Yeah. And, 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 and going back to, to my point, like don't ever entertain a significant other, the possibility of a significant other. If she doesn't fuck with what you fuck with. Mm -hmm. And I know that you guys, obviously, yeah. you're, you know, again, this is a great summer hobby and, and you're going to become a doctor and you're going to go into, well, what, what is your- Probably finance. Financing. So I'm, a, I'm a finance major. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not saying, shit, I might be saying, you know, you're going to be a doctor. Yeah, your wife, your future wife should probably be, I don't know. Yours is different. Because <laughs> if she's in the medical industry, you motherfuckers are so busy. I don't know. I don't know about that. You might need a wife that just stays home with the kids. I, I don't know. Yeah, that, I, you, you got a tougher one. But what I'm saying is if you guys were just snake hunting and doing this dumb shit and having fun and whatever, you can't date a girl who's going to be like, ew. Oh, hell no. You can't. No. You can't. If, if she Did thinks, you just she, kill that python? No, I want to yeah, check go that skin to be. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, baby. Go skin that shit for me. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And uh, if, if, you know, I find a girl who's who's never done that before, fine. But she better be open to learning. Right. There you go. Yeah. See, that's being open-minded. Right. You know, hey, you never done it? Cool. How do you feel about it, though? How do you feel about the topic? Would you be down to go X, Y, and Z? Oh, yeah. You think you're you're better than that, that, than that, that you don't want to go do outdoors, get your hands dirty? You know, I'll, I'll go I, talk to the next one. I yeah, I just feel like, I mean, listen, you're going to have your, your jobs, financing, doctoral things, but you, you need that release, that stress reliever, that, that, oh, this is where I'm at peace. This is where I have tranquility. This is where I get to do something out of my obligations yeah, and, you know, that bring stress, that bring, you know, all, you know just things of that nature. And for you, it's MMA, right? It, right, exactly. Yeah. So the minute you're ready to release and find this, this, this outing, this, this, mm, you can't have a significant other who's like not wanting to do that with you and is trying to pull you in a different direction. No, nah, she needs no to be way. part of it. And I'm not saying that it's going to be snake hunting in the future because you know you might just go on to bigger things, but they need to be part of what you love to do, man. It has to be. I, I don't know how people keep entertaining otherwise. You we know, are lucky that we have a lot of friends that also appreciate the outdoors because like this is what we love doing. We love showing people how to do what we do. And, uh, yeah, it's it, you gotta surround yourself with people who are also. Do, do you guys? Kind of do you guys tend to like? Okay, this is Naples we're talking about, so it's not like some club haven, whatever this and that. <laughs> I'm not making fun of it though, because it's, it's an old people place. Yeah, I, I love There's Naples. Not a lot it's of beautiful, young people in right? Naples. Yeah, but it, even if you had the bars, because everybody has their bars. 
Do you guys, are you guys like getting together with your community people, meaning those who are snake hunters as well or those who are just shit kickers as well and just barbecuing and shit? Or is it, you know, something else, some other life style that comes um, off, off when you're not doing the snake so hunting? So we've never really like met up with snake hunters unless we were all, you know, out there snake hunting. Um, I wouldn't say that they're all like, a certain way. Yeah, just like like an out-of-the-office meetup, you know, to go grab right. beers. But um, lately we've become a lot closer with a lot of snake hunters, so I wouldn't be opposed to just, you know, doing a meetup sometime, just have some fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of people that I've really come to really like out there. Uh, I talked about people doing weird shit out there. Yeah, you see that every once in a while, but 99% of the people you meet out there are really friendly, real helpful people. And it's a good community. I like it. And I'll be honest, most of the people that we – like started meeting when we were out there we're from this coast which you know that's that's a commute for us so right it wasn't really practical to meet up other than when we were both coming out this way to meet up in the middle and go python hunting but we since we've been doing this longer and we've gotten to meet more people now we know people who are hunting in naples or hunting out of naples um so i mean it, it just makes logistically more sense uh the more people we know who are closer to us Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescription is required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. So, guys, so tell me, you know, you guys have these careers you're chasing, and it's not snake hunting, okay, financing. Finances. I know there's a lot of tears. You'll lose me on how many things you can do there. I don't Honestly, know. Honestly, I don't know what I'll end up doing next year, but um, I'm gonna have a degree, so I'll I'll figure it out. Okay. Next year. Well, you're gonna have a lot of options when you're when you're fucking. That's a good thing about a finance. Yeah, career. exactly. Everybody's gotta you know do have something to do with money and managing and all that. And you're gonna be a doctor at some point, but for this for this short lived. I don't know. Maybe you guys make this a summer thing all the time. If you can, I, I think it'd be fucking dope if you guys. That's I think so it'd be fun. so dope if you fuckers committed to each other. If you said, "Hey, no matter what, I don't care. If we're fifty. Every summer, we give at least one full month or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, Just that would be awesome. You know, yeah, like so you can't cool. lose that that tie. You can't lose that bond. You can't lose that something. But I'm over here painting the fucking picture for you. Let me not do that. <laughs> what is it? Sorry. What, what what what's the future hold, man? What are you guys thinking? You know, you just told me something really quick in between a, a break. Joe Rogan started following your page. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so that's pretty cool. That's a mind fuck right there. Uh, it's awesome. Because right, we're just riding this wave of fame. But the whole point is, what, what you were saying. You know, keep this going. I think the whole point is, um, we're trying to clean up the Everglades and manage this Python problem. I think the right. biggest impact that we <clears> could have for the future is because we might not be able to do this forever just to teach enough people and, to and, do and keep spreading and spreading. Right. And we see more Python there hunters out here every summer. I've seen significantly more new people out here this summer than there were last oh, summer. Yeah. So, and I, I've, God, we have like eight or nine friends at this point that we've taught how to Python hunt and go out on their own now. I think if we started a big you know, group of people that we've taught how to Python hunt and they end up picking up the hive themselves and they end up staying in Naples and continue Python hunting, we would say that we ha made an impact. And I like that. I, that would like be a that. lasting impact. I like that. I do like that. Because one person can't make an impact. <clears throat> of course Even not, the best right. state hunter in the state can't say that they've made a significant impact on the state. But everybody combined, yeah, there's been some serious management efforts to by the way since, okay so you know i, I hope we're, we're influencing people with with you guys story and what you guys yeah. are doing and I stuff like that people to go and learn That's so awesome. what what are some of the things that we need to know first of all can anybody do it age limit do you have to get a license is there a certain like what, what are restrictions if any no nah, anyone can get out there i mean of course like it's road cruising so you're driving around so if you're trying <clears> to do it by yourself you probably need a driver's license but right obviously. i mean like We've seen, we've seen people out there with their kids. Like, the other day, we actually we caught this really, really rare python. Um, and as we were catching it, uh, this guy, contractor pulled up with his kid. And his kid was probably, I don't know, maybe 13 years old. Yeah, he was young. 12, 13 years old. So anyone can get out there and do this. It's a ton of fun. Um, Just make sure you're following traffic laws and you're being safe. 
Um, but we do want to clarify, no one's getting paid for this. You, you're not going to get, there's no bounty hunt. There's no bounty for so, one of these snakes unless you contract it yeah, by the state. Don't do state. it for the money. The people that are doing it for the money quit very soon. Okay. Do it because you love helping the environment. You love hunting you know? and you love Florida and you love save. You know, helping contribute to saving Florida. Right. Um, but yeah, what Stevie was saying. Do you know what a labyrinth python is? A labyrinth python. So, damn no. So it's basically a rare genetic morph, <clears throat> a Burmese python. Um, where they have a little bit of a different pattern. I don't know. Like it's kind of describe what, what it's like. So, so a normal python, it's almost like square blotches. Like, of course, there's some variations where maybe it's, you know, an oblong square or something. Mm -hmm. But it's mostly like square spots, mm -hmm. like down this python with like, you know, lighter lines. This, its blotches are all kind of like, imagine you take a bucket of paint and you just kind of like spread it on the asphalt or whatever. It's okay. like these long almost like sprawly splatter okay it's like a maze like okay a yeah. okay so they call it a labyrinth python and we just caught a hatchling python the other day that had this labyrinth pattern uh, and it's incredibly rare it was one of the best finds we've ever had out there just super mm -hmm. cool to see it in person so congratulations that's awesome but is that is that also something that we should worry about like is that is that means that now this species is also multiplying it and still is a burmese python it's still a burmese oh, python. it's not a different species okay, okay, it's okay, kind okay. of like if you saw an albino uh, an albino. Okay. It's like albino. Okay, it's got like you. a genetic, a recessive you. genetic okay. trait that is very rare. Um, and it doesn't affect its viability to feed or do any of that stuff. So are you trying to keep them? Or you killed it? We wish, but we yeah, it's it's dead because, uh, I mean, the state mandates that you have to kill these pythons. So we would love to keep something like that or, you know, give it to some place for educational stuff. And, you know, with a snake that gorgeous, you'd, you'd wish that, like, the state would allow, like, some exceptions, like, or that <clears throat> monster that Jake got, if that were used for, like, outreach, being like, this is this is the problem we're facing the Everglades. This is why people need to get out there. Instead of being like, yep, that's just another snake. Pop it in the head and go on your own business. Yeah. We had a lot of animal rights people approach us on Instagram and just say that we should die and we suck and we're animal abusers. What they don't realize is we're required to euthanize these pythons after capture because if I drive home with that snake alive in my truck, that's transporting an invasive animal. Yeah, but you know, you know what those stupid ass people would tell you. Sorry to cut you off, Jake. They're gonna tell you, well, you didn't have to grab it. You could have drove by. Nah, I'm grabbing that thing. <laughs> well, uh, exactly. I'm saying, I mean, fuck them. I'm I, Peter ass nah, people. That was, too, that was yeah. too fun. I'm not trading that for. But the world. No, and not only yeah. that though, but you know, these people they go so far with this shit. Listen, at some point, get off the fence. Choose a side. Mm -hmm. This species is destroying my native species. This is where I live. This is my backyard. This is where my loyalty's at. And this fucking character doesn't belong here yeah and on top of that there's a law that says i'm supposed to do this this and that so no fuck you i'm gonna do it that's it i, I hate when they go so extra with the peter shit you know i remember speaking of joe rogan he was talking about this a few podcasts ago how people have made this this teddy rupskin teddy bear plush teddy bear of the bear of the the you know a, a, a grizzly bear a yeah. black bear a polar bear and they're not that they're not that. They're vicious ass fucking animals who will kill and maul and eat their own young and all kind of crazy <laughs> shit. But you have these people who either, you know, again, make a teddy bear out of a real grizzly bear and take the fear factor away from it and, and kind of make people delusional about what bears really are and how they are. <clears throat> and then you got the PETA people who, you know, just think that let everything happen naturally. Don't interfere with it because of whatever reason they have. And it's like you have to have a dominant species. We have to have some type of order. <laughs> right, and you understand that. And I've had people message me saying, what, you killed this snake? How would you feel if I came and killed your family? Are you holding snakes the same standard as humans? Exactly, dude. <laughs> That's are you for crazy. real? Yeah. That's fucking insane. <clears throat> and they do it, and, and they are fucking crazy. These are the same people who raise alligators, and they're laying in bed with them until they get eaten by one yeah. of them. Remember, we were talking about that earlier, you know? Yeah, alligators are cool <clears throat> as hell. Like, you could theoretically train one like a dog, but I, I think at one point you have to be a reasonable human being and say, humans are different than snakes. That's right. <laughs> That's just they're it, really. different things. And just mammals are different than reptiles. I mean, like, keeping a gator or a snake is different than keeping, like, a yes. bunny. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That's true as well. <laughs> Speaking of bunnies, what? They're part of that 99% that's gone? Oh, they're I gone can, in the Everglades. I can count on my hand the amount of times we've been out there and seen bunnies. And not and we don't even hunt Everglades National Park. I'm talking like places outside of that, like Big Cypress you know, and Picayune Strand. Places where they're not supposed to be 99%. <clears throat> and I can still count on my hand how many I've I seen. I think I've seen two ever. 
We see some possums sometimes, but that's about it for small mammals. That's wild, man. Sometimes we we'll see rats every the, once in a while. The rat long. the rats surprisingly, their population has actually exploded since the pythons. And like increased. Which you would think would be like very counterintuitive. What it, what it, what do you think the explanation is for that? That's kind of wild. I think it's because there's no, like, rabbits or anything else competing with them for any sort of food. Oh, so in other words, even though the even though the pythons have their pickings of rats, because they eliminated all the other predators or other yeah. foods, now these rats are just multiplying a lot faster rats, than they can kill them. Plenty of rats are getting eaten, but you got to think about how fast they rats, multiply, rats right. can adapt yeah. and multiply. Yeah. They breed like rats. They are the ultimate survivors in the evolutionary animal kingdom. They just They just learn to survive no matter what. Goddamn rats. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there, there's a lot of them out there. We'll see them. <clears throat> well, I, I love I love what you guys are doing, man. I know the message is out there, and, and I, I just told you guys, and, and everybody can follow up with me on this. I'm going to go hunting with these guys um, before they go back to college. You're leaving on August 17th, so I have a good two, three weeks at most. We're going to make it happen. I got to talk to my clients. Oh, yeah. We're going to make it happen. I'm dying to do this. Hell I love yeah. this type of stuff. I don't even care if... We don't catch anything. Just it's kind of like I always tell people. When people say, "Oh, why do you like fishing? It's so boring." Boring if you if you, if you're born in your mind, that's not because fishing's boring. That's you. Yeah. Something's wrong with you. Peace and tranquility. Yeah. Oh yeah. While enjoying best. Mother Nature, while enjoying the slight adventure of a hunt and the hope that and something exactly will happen. exactly all it's of it the unknown. all of it combined and, it, and now you throw in there hanging out with cool people yeah. and we're fucking having a beer and a cigar or join or uh, whatever that's awesome. that's it i'm in damn near heaven all i need is a girlfriend who can do it with it and if <laughs> yeah. she can't then, not, then you're out but, of there you yeah, know i can't wait to take you out and uh, kind of show you yeah what we're, we're, we're definitely going to do it um i want you guys to get some followers over here people to support you guys mm-hmm. let's give out the uh, the instagram handle um to the people listening and watching yeah. and then uh, do you guys you guys have your own instagrams i imagine as well right yeah, if you want to yeah, get yeah. that out They're so also on the page okay so what's the what's the group yep. with the so we're at glades boys on instagram that's primarily we Glaze Boys G L A D E S B O Y S Glaze Boys. Correct. Yeah. So the the full business name is uh, Glaze Boys Python Adventures, but on Instagram you can very easily find us as Glaze Boys. Um, we do most of our marketing on there. We're not on Twitter, a little bit on TikTok, but they keep banning me <laughs> because we're animal abusers for some really? reason. Really? Is that what's going on? Oh yeah, they Jesus. they flagged our videos for animal abuse and promoting dangerous activities. Because you're showing the kill. Nope, not nope, even showing the kill. So how, just just grabbing the what? Yeah. And it, and not breaking any laws, nothing. But so I'm done with that. But Instagram, that's where we're on. You can find us there. Um, yeah, shoot us a text or DM. Um, or we love to. Take so I know I know that right now you guys are so like busy because you know you blew up with with the 19 foot record breaker again. Congrats on that. That's Thank awesome. You. I, I, I want to hear another record break. You know whether it's you or one or one of your compadres that you guys all mingle yeah. with in the community, but. Um, if you guys listening would like to go on a trip with these guys, reach out to them again. They're, they're going to be entertaining, taking out clients up until mid August and then end, they'll be end back of August end of August. I'll still be here. So we, we actually have uh two people that when some of us can't come and hunt with us, okay, they're very, very good at hunting. They just didn't start the glades. They're part of the thing. glades boys clan. All right. You know? So, I love so it. We, we taught them everything they know and, uh, we've got, we've got a little group together. So building i love we're it building yeah. we're building and um yeah if you're a new hunter reach out like show so, me your first catch like I'm, I'm interested in seeing how many new people are getting into this yeah. so end of august people can come with us and, and again folks let's keep in mind uh, and this is why i mentioned earlier it's not about you're not going to make money off the snake shit if you want to keep the snake if you catch one and you want to you know theirs. make something with it yeah. that, that's up to you but really what it is is you're, you're enjoying the experience you're doing something you probably never done and you're helping out in our agriculture, in our, you know, our our, yeah. our Everglades community because these are invasive species at the end of the day and we do need to get a grip on it. So, oh, yeah. um, guys, I see you still got beer in your in your, in your your beers. Let's cheers, man. Great meeting cheers. you guys. I love that cheers. you guys came to the podcast and uh, can't wait to have you back and I can't wait to go with you guys on that trip. Right, guys, go show your time. support. Make sure you go follow these guys. Don't forget to follow, like, subscribe. And uh, if you're interested in the apparel, make sure you visit blacksheepapparelshop.com. Uh, and we'll see you guys on the next one, man. Yeah, Take sure. care, world. Peace.